So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to process HDR images properly. I'm gonna tell you what a HDR image is and how to create them. Now in short, it will turn an image like this into an image like this. Now HDR stands for High Dynamic Range and it's used to give yourself a higher dynamic range in your images. So what is dynamic range? Well dynamic range is the range of lights and darks that you have in your image and it's also the range of colors that you have in your image as well. So a normal image, just this is just a, a simple example for instance, right? So a normal image may have that much uh, dynamic range in it. If you make an HDR image, you're gonna give it that much dynamic range. And in short, that means that you can push shadows a lot more, push highlights a lot more, boost colors a lot more, and you know, basically have a lot more to play with when it comes to post-processing. Now to create a HDR image, you need at least three pictures of the same scene taken at different exposures. Let's go into Lightroom and I'll show you that in more detail. So we're gonna use this image here, this one here that you can see, and I'm, I'm using this on purpose because it's a fairly boring picture of a very nice scene, okay? So this was taken um, during our filming of our pro landscape photography course with Tom Archer. You should go and check that out, it's absolutely fantastic. This is one of my pictures, right? This was, I don't know, four o'clock in the afternoon, so it weren't sunset, it weren't sunrise. Literally pointed the camera up, took a picture. And I'm using this on purpose because I wanna show you what HDR can actually do to your imagery, all right? So to get a HDR image, you need a middle exposure, which was this one here. As we can see at the top here, it's shot at ISO 400 here, F5 at 1,000th of a second. And then you need to take another two exposures at least. Now with HDR, you can actually do five exposures, seven, whatever, but generally it's three or five, and personally I just use three, okay? So you want three exposures, one as the middle exposure, which is this, and one, I'd normally go for two stops higher and two stops lower, okay? So two stops darker, two stops lighter, that's me personally, but again, you can do one stop each side, etc. So let's have a look at my versions. We've got this one here, which is two stops higher than this one here, and you know that by the shutter speeds here. Look, that's one thousandth of a second. We go to this one, and that's one two hundred and fiftieth of a second. And then we've got this picture here, which is two stops darker than the original exposure, right? Now let's break this down, okay? Let's go back to the normal exposure. So this is the camera's correct exposure. This is when the camera exposure meter is on zero. And what you've got with this scene is dark areas in the foreground, you can see that there, and bright areas in the background, i.e. the sky. Now you can process that, this is a raw file, you can process it in Lightroom, bring out them shadows, darken um, that sky, etc. You can do that and it will look all right, you know? But when you use HDR imagery, you basically are doing this. You're mixing all of these three exposures together. So for argument's sake, here's the middle exposure. We want this bit brighter. So we take a brighter exposure and now we've got all of that detail in the shadows to use. Let's go back to the middle exposure again here. And as you can see up the top here, it's quite bright, not much detail there. And then you take one two stops under like that and then that gives you all of the details in the highlights. So let's go back to the middle exposure again. So effectively, what you're doing is you're getting three images, different exposures, you're merging them together using HDR software like Lightroom. We're obviously using Lightroom, but there's lots out there that you can use. And then you'll have all of that detail in one file to process, okay? So let's go back into Lightroom and process it. And to turn these three images into a HDR, it's very, very simple. All you do is you highlight all three images. You do that by holding down the control key and just clicking on them all. You right click on any one of them. You go to photo merge and you choose HDR. 
And there you can see that Lightroom is now merging them together. And incidentally, the three files there that we've merged together are just plain raw files. No editing has been done to any of them files. They've just been well, now merged together here like this. So Lightroom brings up this HDR merge preview box here, and then you've got some options, okay? You can auto align the images, and that's done if you were hand holding. And in this particular instance, I was actually hand holding. I had the camera set to auto bracketing, and you know, I just clicked the button, and uh, it took three pictures for me at three different exposures. So ticking auto align here is something that I want. You've also got this here, which is auto settings. So I'm gonna tick off of that for a minute. So that will be the merged HDR image. And then I click on it and Lightroom gives you an automatic setting already for that picture. So it's looking quite cool actually with the auto setting, but I wanna process this from scratch. Okay, so I'm gonna tick auto settings off. And then under here, you've got de-ghosting amount. Okay, you've got none, low, medium and high. Now that is for if anything was moving during them free exposures, Lightroom will automatically get rid of them. A really easy way to describe it is, let's just say this image here, I took the first exposure, and then just before the second exposure, a big bird flew straight in, in the foreground of the picture, right? Then it took the middle exposure, the bird flew out, and then it took the last exposure, okay? That would mean I would have my three separate exposures, but with one of them, a bird flew through the frame, okay? Well, de-ghosting will notice, will detect anything like that, and it will remove it for you, and it's as simple as that, really. Now, nothing did move in this picture, you could argue that the clouds are moving, but they were taken so quickly, it was nice and bright, they were taken so quickly, one after the other, so the clouds are not gonna move, you know, hardly anything at all, which means that, you know, I don't need to apply any de-ghosting to this. Now, it's just really clicking on any of these and checking your image, it really is as simple as that. Now, you might be doing long exposures, for instance, and with them, the sky, the, the clouds in the sky could be streaking. So you could have a 30 second exposure, 15 second exposure, minute one, etc., and they could be your free exposures to merge. Now, if that's the case, things will be moving through your frame and you will need to experiment with de-ghosting. But in this particular instance, I don't. So I'm gonna click on none. Down the bottom here, it says create stack. I'm gonna keep that ticked because I wanna show you what a stack is in Lightroom. So I'm gonna create, keep that tick ticked and then I'm just gonna click merge down the bottom here. And Lightroom is now merging them three pictures to create one HDR image. And here it is here down the bottom. And as you can see, we've got the number four at the top, right? And that's the stack that I was telling you about. So Lightroom has stacked it in your film strip to make it nice and neat. And all you need to do to unstack it is click on the, the number four and you can see. So now I've got that dark exposure, the light exposure, the middle exposure, all merged together into one lovely HDR image here. And incidentally, you can see it's a HDR image because it's got the, the letters HDR next to your file name. Mine's got dash two next to it because, you know, that one there is the one I made earlier, okay? This one here, this HDR image, has now got all of the information from all of these three images here. Ready for me to process. Now, before I process it, let me take this opportunity to tell you about the courses that we have over at theschoolofphotography.com. If you wanna learn Lightroom properly, we've got a full in-depth structured course over at the theschoolofphotography.com. It is five star rated. It's taken by tens of thousands of people all across the world. And I know that our courses will take your photography to the next level. So if you wanna learn Photoshop, Lightroom, photography, and many, many other things properly, and that's the key term here. If you want to learn photography properly, you come over and see us at theschooloffotography.com where we will help you out. Okay, let's go and process this picture.
So firstly, we're gonna go into the basic panel and do our basic adjustments, which I always think are far from basic, all right? The main gist of stuff is done in here. And firstly, I am just gonna to continue to work in the color profile Adobe Color here. I'm gonna leave my white balance as shot, and then I'm gonna come and muck about with this stuff here. So let's take the exposure down, I think just slightly like that. We can adjust it again in a minute. A uh, little bit of contrast, I think, like that. Let's bring them highlights down and look at the detail that we've got in that sky. Okay, so let's bring them highlights down like that. Let's lift up these shadows and again, look at the detail that we've now got over in this dark area in the left of our image. So let's bring them shadows right up. Let's add some whites, not that many, and some blacks here. I just think that gives it a bit more contrast, you know, adding a bit of whites and a bit of blacks. Let's come down to the vibrant slider here. I always like adding a little bit of vibrance into the images. And let's see what saturation does now. Saturation, I think, can, can ruin an image if you overdo it. So I'm just gonna put just a tiny, tiny little bit of saturation in. That's looking all right. I might just reduce that uh, exposure slightly. And let's do it that way because it's a bit more controllable that way. There we go, like that going to reduce that contrast a little bit as well. Okay, like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is color tone the image. Now I'm going to do it using curves. Curves are brilliant for color toning images. They're a bit more complex than other ways, but I think it's much better. And if you do want to learn about curves properly, our Photoshop course, I've got a whole lesson which teaches you all about it, right? But for now, I'm going to go into the curves panel here and I'm gonna select the blue channel. I'm gonna select the blue channel of curve, and then I'm gonna bring the curve down. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm removing blues from the image, and in turn, adding yellows to the image, okay? So if I pull it down, you can see that the image is going yellow, and the blues are being removed, okay? Now, when I do that, it's doing that color adjustment to the whole image. Now. I really only want it to affect the highlights, you know? So for that, I'm gonna put another point in the curve down here, and I'm gonna bring it up like this. There we go, that's very nice. And then I can come back to this point, and I can bring it down a bit further. And let's just overdo it a little bit for this video, I think, so that you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna bring it down to about there, okay? Now effectively, what I've done using curves there, very, very simply, is remove the blues from the highlights and in turn add yellow because when you're working with curves, you're working with the color wheel, with the CYMK color wheel. So you're removing blue and in turn adding yellows and that's how you get that effect. And here, what I did here was take that effect away from the shadows. So it's only affecting the highlights, okay? And then I'm gonna skip the other color grading panel, shall we say, because I've done it in the tone curve. So if I come down here, I'm not gonna add any HSL, I'm not gonna add any uh, color grading here, but I am gonna add some detail, which is to sharpen up the image, all right? And I'm going to take the amount slider to around about 80 here, like that. I'm gonna add some masking to the sharpening, only a bit like that, and that will just take the sharpening effect off of the sky and off of the blank areas. And you do that, let's just put it to around about there, 25. And you do that because at sharpening your image will add noise to the image, okay? So you only actually wanna sharpen textured areas, textured areas and edges. And then you wanna take that sharpening away from smooth blank areas so that you don't add unnecessary noise into them areas. And that's basically what the masking has just done there. So I'm gonna click on the image to zoom into 100%, and then I'm gonna turn off the detail panel. There we go, and turn it back on, and there you go. You can see that it has just crisped up that uh, image, just how we like it. Now, because we're on an ISO of 400 here, I'm just gonna move the image down to the sky again. You can still see a little bit of noise in the sky, and this is where noise reduction in Lightroom can help you out, but be very careful with noise reduction because it can soften your image. But for this particular image, I'm just gonna come up about 10 
on the luminance of the noise reduction and that has just taken the noise away slightly. You've still got it a little bit, but slightly from the sky. So again, let's turn that off. So that's without the sharpening and that's with the sharpening, without the sharpening and with the sharpening. And you can certainly see it's crisped up all of these areas in the foreground and all the texture of the picture. Let's click on the image to full screen it again. And the next thing that I want to do is see if I can bring a little bit more detail and oomph, shall we say, into the sky. And I'm gonna do that using masking. So let's come up to the top here in Lightroom. We're gonna click on the masking icon here. Now I could add a sky mask to this and that will obviously, that will just target the sky. But I'm actually gonna use a linear gradient like the old fashioned way, shall we say. And the reason for that is because I think that it will benefit these mountains as well if I do that. So we can always try and take it away if it don't work, but let's grab the linear gradient here. Let's drag from the top to sort of the middle of the image like that. And incidentally, if you wanna learn all about masking in Lightroom, we've got a YouTube video on it and uh, we cover it in our Lightroom course as well in much more detail, okay? So let's come over to the effects here of this mask. And the first obvious thing actually is to just bring down the exposure. Again, let's just overdo it a little bit just for now for this video and bring it down to about there. And then let's grab the highlights as well and see what happens. Oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? Let's bring them highlights down like that. Let's come over to the gradient and maybe lift it a little bit. Yeah, that's better. So it's not totally on the trees, etc. So around about there. Let's hide that mask and bring it back. Yeah, hide it and bring it back. And you can see what I mean, that it's just darkened the mountains as well, which I quite like. That's how easy it is to, um, to take an image. Now don't forget, this was like an image not taken at sunset, not taken at sunrise. I have got a beautiful scene in front of me. The light was flat, I was hand holding, you know, but we've taken this image and we've made it into this here. Let's have a look at the before and after. I'm gonna come down to the before and after icon down the bottom here, and there you go. That is the original HDR merge, if you like, the raw HDR merge, and here is the process HDR merge. And just look, I'm gonna just zoom in here. Just look at the detail that we've now got in these clouds that we haven't got over here, you know? And that effectively is the highlight, so using HDR has given you more punch in the highlights and now if we come over to the shadow area which was these trees i mean look at the difference there as well look there is much more definition in the shadows of this image as well so that's what hdr is it's giving you more dynamic range in the highlights and in the shadows and in the whole color range across your image and it's very very easy to produce now Let's just go back to um, full screen on this. Let's just click on this image to go back to full screen. Now, some of you are probably thinking to yourself, well, I can pull that information out of a RAW file. Yeah, you can, especially with the really expensive, big full frame type cameras, but you still, when you pull shadow, no matter what camera you've got, when you pull shadows and push highlights, etc., in a RAW file, in one RAW file, you degrade them shadows and them highlights. When you merge from a HDR, you don't degrade it nowhere near as much. You know, you retain a lot more of the detail. So let's just final look on the before and after. Look, I think it's absolutely amazing. So that is what a HDR image is, and that is how you process it in Lightroom. I really, really hope it's helped you out. If you're doing landscape photography, this is a technique that you must know. Now, if it has helped you, you need to help us, right? You know the rules. Subscribe to our channel, click the like button, share it with your friends. Give us a comment, as a matter of fact. Do you like this technique or not? Some people call it cheating, blah, 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 okay? Put it in the comments, get a conversation going. And don't forget, if you want to learn photography properly, you want to learn Lightroom properly, come over and see us at theschoolofphotography.com. I'll see you in the next video.